Alright, what's up y'all, it's like a fan here. In today's vid, as you can see by the title, I'm going over the best controller settings on NBA 2K20. I've always looked into this kind of stuff and fine-tuned the ones I feel uneasy about every single year, all the way back to 2K17, I've adjusted this stuff. So, I'm very familiar with what they all do, and how they react, and how they act, but anyway, we'll get straight into it, because this is absolutely going to be a shorter video, so I'll give you guys what you came here for, and then we'll discuss afterwards. If y'all could drop a like for me though, and tell me what your box out and defensive assist strength are before watching this video, I really appreciate it appreciate that but anyway like I said we're gonna get straight into all the information right here so first things first I should tell you guys how you get to this stuff because some of this is restricted in the park and your my court you can't adjust them in this in these situations so you got to come to the menu and go to controller settings skip all this stuff at the top none of it's really useful but I'll get into some of it as we uh, kind of work our way up but again defensive assist strength box out assist strength and then the past target profile so we're here to talk a little bit about this stuff now this is how I will explain this. It's very easy to feel, but it's hard to see the difference. I'm gonna put it like that. So if I were to literally just show you clips of all this stuff in action, you're not gonna see the difference because it's all about you and your controller and how you feel about it. Now, the most noticeable thing I'm gonna point out is the box out assist string. In years past, 2K has been really notorious for resetting your controller settings randomly, and you could feel the difference when it happens. So like I said, I just wanna tell y'all that doesn't happen as often in this year's game, but when it does get reset to 50 box out assist strength, I totally notice the difference. And now, like I said, you guys are gonna have to trust me when it comes to this. If you wanna test these out yourself, feel free to. But like I said, there's no visual proof that I can show you. So this is why we're just keeping the video short. I'm not trying to get the bag off this video. I'm just trying to help y'all out and do it in a very fashionable and quick kind of setting. So again, I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna just show you guys the defaults. So this right here is what you're gonna be working with with the default settings. So let's get to defensive assist strength. I'm not going to sit here and say this is the most life-changing thing right here. I'm not going to say that it's the most important thing. And look at this. I, I don't even feel comfortable looking at my box out assist strength on 50. I just, I never ever have it on anything but zero since 2K17. And I'm going to be real with y'all. I've never tweaked my box out assist strength this year as far as anything other than zero because I feel so secure in it being zero. I've never played around with like 20 or 25, 35, anything like that. But like I said, when it gets reset to 50, I will say the noticeable difference is you feel like you just get pulled into the box out a little bit more more and I don't know I just I'm not a big fan of it like I said it's a lot of voodoo stuff with this like you know controller settings which again is like I said why we're keeping this video a little bit shorter we're not gonna be just rambling for 10 minutes on this stuff but I will say if you are a big and you want to test this out I would definitely recommend it I am a 6'9 undersized big and you would think I rely on box outs a whole lot right I would agree with that as well so again I just want to put y'all onto that right there so the next piece of information, I got a cool little story for you guys on this one actually. So I have no problem telling you guys this. The first time that I ever came across anybody changing their defensive assist strength was actually Nade back in 2K17. I caught a glimpse of it in a in a stream of his that his defensive assist strength was up to like 25 or something or 30 I think. And I was like, that's mad interesting. I want to play around with that a little bit. So um over the years this has changed a lot for me in in previous years like 2k18 i felt like having it at zero was the way to go um i think i had it at like 30 in another year as well for like a, a major part and then i kind of decided to go with something different so just understand a lot of this is like me fine tuning to my liking you can also do this too but i'm just putting y'all on to some of the settings that i like the most and this honestly i can say like very securely too I play great on ball defense with the 6 9 lockdown. It's like, you know, the slash lock that a lot of you guys are familiar with. It only has like 65 lateral quickness, but I feel so great when it comes to the perimeter D. And I know a lot of you guys have seen it in the video. So, again, I just want to put y'all on to what I'm working with here. This was mostly a video for my subs as well, just to like kind of put y'all on to that stuff because you see what's going on as far as like how good I play in certain situations. And don't get me wrong, some of that comes down to stick skill. Like, obviously, if you're a skilled rebounder, skilled on ball defender, backside defender, head defender all types of stuff like that you know like obviously some of that all comes down to skill but I'm here to put y'all on to the tools that I use as far as doing all that stuff so then this one is more for like playing rec or pro-am and stuff like that obviously the past target profile stuff doesn't really matter too much if you have three people on the court and obviously it doesn't matter at all if you have two so just understand this isn't the biggest deal when it comes to the park but this is the defaults now the only thing you have to adjust to get to the settings that I want is like change your directional to 97 it'll it'll automatically set the other two to two and one now 
I feel like personally, I like this as an inside big man because I can control where it goes a lot more. I don't have to know my directions. And if I'm trying to skip past to the wing when they pre-rotate off the corner, I can like just point it back into the left and I'll pass to my wing guy. And that's a big thing that I need to be able to do. Now, obviously, if I'm trying to be complex and next level with it, I just remember what my icon is for, you know, that top of the key, like wing guy that is my point guard. Because like I said, for Pro-Am, I'll put it like this. When I roll, they rotate and drop the corner down to me and then the the wing drops down to the corner so when i just pass to the corner i look i look stupid and and you know we have nowhere to go on offense so a lot of times i like to make up for that by passing to the person who is rotating and pass it back to the wing now obviously like i said if i just know my icons it'll be much more simple i can just be able to hit him like that but anyway one thing i do want to mention with this though is a lot of like top pro-am point guards be talking about at least i've seen this like bp i remember i saw him on twitter one day was talking about this and he was talking about how if you like just put your openness to like 30 or something like that or literally like i think 40 um that it like takes no skill as a point guard because it, they were just saying it's super whack because you're just able to get bailed out by stuff like that but again i, I just wanted to put y'all onto that just to give you a different perspective on it other than mine as well but this is what i like just because i have more control over it and i don't have to necessarily like always use the icons but again i just want to put y'all into that so then the last couple things that we have to tell you about the icon lead passing this may be the problem that a lot of you inside bigs have if you're throwing if you're throwing like outlet passes and you're dribbling now in the first place i'll just recommend don't take any dribbles when it comes to that outlet passing stuff just go ahead and just tap your right bumper and left bumper and it'll pass to the deepest person on the break if you start moving i feel like this is what the icon lead passing problem is is because if you're moving your left stick the lead pass for the icon passing is meant for you to be like the direction your left stick is going is the way you want the pass to lead a little bit like some madden stuff essentially right you're leading your receiver now with this if you're moving forward while doing that you're you're necessarily leading your receiver like past the baseline and that's probably why you're sailing passes like that and they're super inaccurate i'll just a maybe if you're an inside big and you have low pass accuracy or outside big even for that matter turn your turn off your icon lead passing but me personally i don't really care to do so because i know my way around it and i just you know don't really take too many dribbles when it comes to the to the outlet passing and then this right here the pro stick pass type if you hold rb and use your right stick it'll do a flashy pass i don't know just a cool little cool little bit of information it's not like you need to know that anyway now if you want to just do pro stick like you know if you like to do icon passes a lot and be holding your right bumper up a lot if you want to just quickly directional pass to somebody on a normal pass then you can just keep it on normal and you can use your right stick to do so now this right here i want to clarify to you guys too because i told y'all about this pass type control setting it's really cool but the thing is that it like has a it has a real big catch to it that i didn't tell you all about and i didn't realize it so i want to like tell you all about it now so the pass type control setting on this it allows you when you're holding your icons up to double tap their icon for a bounce pass hold it for a high pass and then you know i was i was sitting here thinking like oh it should be pretty simple when it comes to the whole you know just tapping it normally we'll keep it as a normal pass the thing about this is that it makes like it makes a super delayed pass when you do your regular icon so i would not recommend do that i saw <laughs> it's kind of funny joe had this on randomly one day and was talking about how delayed his passes were and i told him about how he might have this setting on by accident and then boom of course he did so again i wanted to tell you all about that as far as my best controller settings or like the the best like point god iq stuff because this was a really cool like little setting right here but again it just it doesn't work very well so i would just recommend to keep that on default other than that a lot of this stuff isn't really like you know necessary to know obviously like when it comes to your shooting you might want to take the meter off and but i would keep all this stuff on but anyway that's all for the vid i hope you all enjoyed if you did feel free to drop a like sub if you're new turn on the noties all that good stuff if you made it to the end of the video tell me what you're gonna be rocking out with for your box out in defensive assist strength now and put laker in the comments to show your support that you made all the way through but anyway if we get this like 500 likes in the first 24 or even like 300 in the first 24 i'd really appreciate that i understand this video is not like you know the best video when it comes to you know like recommended and like youtube search and stuff like that but anyway other than that i hope y'all enjoyed and take it easy man peace